lid's too tight. I need something to get a grip on it. Hello? Albert, where have you been? You've been out in the rain. It's a good thing we've got a roof over our heads. <laughs> got a hole in it. Meow. You just wait there, Albert. I'll go and see what's causing that leak. This umbrella's no good. It's not getting the rain out. <laughs> They're all right. The feathers are keeping them dry. Sorry, CC. Why don't ducks get wet in the rain? The water just seems to run off their backs. Well, their feathers keep them dry. I know that already, CC. The feathers keeps the rain off their skins. But how? Because birds oil their feathers. Ducks have an oil gland near their tails, and they wipe this oil over themselves when they're preening. It makes their feathers waterproof. Feathers are a great covering, especially for rain and water. Maybe we should all be covered in feathers. Fur is far superior. Meow. It's so warm and soft. But birds have soft, fluffy feathers to keep themselves warm, as well as their flying feathers, CC. That's just as good as fur. Better, really, because cats can't fly. Cats don't need to fly. And it should be remembered, Hunter, that not all birds can fly either. Penguins, for example, they can't fly. Their wings aren't nearly big enough for flying. I can see that. Don't you wish you could swim as well as they can? Mm, no. They look as though they're flying underwater. Obviously, their feathers are waterproof. Mm. You and I wouldn't last long outside in weather like that. But they don't seem to mind. Mm. Penguin feathers are certainly a great covering. Mm, maybe. But some furry animals live in water as well as on land, you know. These coverings need more investigation. You look into fur, CC, and I'll take Albert hunting. Meow. The rain's easing off. But I'll cover myself properly this time. We'll go to the museum. Cheerio, CC. Bye. <laughs> Feathers. <laughs> I'll show them. Birds better than cats. Never. Please touch gently. Cece's right. This possum fur is a soft covering. Museums are rather interesting places, Albert. You can get close to things. This echidna's a bit uncomfortable. A spiky covering. 
platypus soft again. Mmm, soft owl. See how the feathers sort of overlap one another neatly. They're very light. Owls fly silently at night, looking for mice and things to eat, you know, Albert. Well, don't worry. You don't have to go out in the dark. Your white covering would show up too much. Look at the sea eagle up there. It's much bigger than the owl, and its wings are much larger. Beautiful colours. Birds of paradise. Aren't they superb coverings? And what's in this case? Snakes, Albert. A different sort of covering altogether. Scales. And over here, more scales. Fish. They're covered for a life underwater. We've done very well with our coverings here, Albert. Fur. Spikes. Feathers. Scales. Let's go home and tell CC. Ah, the rain's gone. The sky isn't covered with clouds anymore. Yes, CC. I found out a lot about coverings in there. I'm on my way home now. It's turned out to be a lovely day after all. Remember our roof? Oh, I forgot that. I'll call into a hardware store and get something to repair it with. Thanks for reminding me, CC. Off we go, Albert. This looks like the place. Let's see if they've got something to fix the roof with. This looks like the stuff for sealing holes in roofs. I'll take it home and discuss it with CC. We must mend our roof before it rains again, Albert. Roofs are a pretty good covering when they haven't got holes in them. I wish we lived nearer the shops. It always takes rather a long time to get home. And there's an experiment I want to do to test some other coverings. Right, CC. The starting temperature of hottie number three filled with boiling water is 80 degrees. The same as hottie number one wrapped in newspaper and number two wrapped in my sleeping bag. Yes, Hunter. Uncovered hot water bottle, 80 degrees. And next, I'll check their temperature every half hour to see which hottie keeps warm the longest. I wonder which one it'll be. Right, now to get started on the roof. Mending our roof can wait a while, Hunter. I have some information on waterproof fur. Furry animals that live in water. Sea otters. They look very much at home. Mm. And what's this? A water rat. 
He finds most of his food underwater. Yes. And so does the platypus. He's an interesting furry animal. Young elephant seals, Hunter, they're covered in a beautiful waterproof fur. Some people make clothing out of animal skins, you know. Yes, that's true. Animal furs and skins have always helped to keep us warm. I did have a book on it somewhere. You can see these people are dressed in clothes made from animal skins and feathers. Mm. And eider downs and sleeping bags have soft fluffy feathers inside them. They help to keep us warm too. Oh, yeah. We use wool from sheep to make blankets and clothing. Silkworms provide silk too. We can dye it to give us lovely colours and it feels silky. So, people can't do without animals and <clears throat> worms to keep them warm and dry. Well, that's not quite true. We make clothes from other things, like plants, cotton and flax. I see. And we wear all sorts of coverings made from things we make ourselves, like plastics for raincoats. Why do you people need all these coverings and clothes? Why can't you use your own skins? Well, I need clothes for all sorts of reasons. I use this outfit to keep me cool on a hot day. <laughs> oh, you do look funny, Hunter. I'm glad I've got stripy fur and not stripes like that. <laughs> it's not funny, Cece. Human beings often need special clothing when they go into difficult and dangerous places. I'll show you. Firefighting. doing things underwater. Mm, I hate water. Working in laboratories with dangerous chemicals. or going into outer space. So our clothes protect us. 
Lots of insects and animals protect themselves too, with a hard outside covering, like beetles. Turtles and tortoises, armadillos, shellfish, and garden snails. They can hide away in their shells when they sense danger. And some animals protect themselves with spikes. Porcupines, for instance. And echidnas. Albert and I saw echidnas at the museum. You know, Cece, when you think about it, animals and insects, birds and fish, all have coverings which help them live in the place where they belong. And most of them keep the same covering all their lives. Some of them change coverings. Butterflies. There's so much to find out about coverings. Makes you hungry, doesn't it? <coughs> this milk bottle tops another sort of covering. And so is this. The teapot lid, and the cork in that jar. There's a top on the glue pot to stop it drying out. And there's one on the sugar jar to stop things getting in. Mmm. Lots of coverings here. These nuts have shells. Now, and oranges, bananas and pineapples have skins. Albert, look at this. Well, look what happens when I make the hole a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. Sorry, old chap. I was only working out what happens to the water when you change the size of the hole. See? With a big hole, the water just comes straight out. But 
If I put my finger over it... Oh. Wait a minute, Albert. Sorry, Albert. It was an accident, really. May have been an accident, Hunter, but what a silly thing to do. When that poor little mouse came in through his hole, I his thought... His hole! That... Of course! Perhaps we should block it up. It lets a draught in, and Albert might catch cold. Not to mention me. That's funny. A hole in the hose, let the water out, and a hole in the door, let Albert in. Two different kinds of hole. There are lots of holes around that door, Hunter. Like what, Cece? I can't... Yes, I can. The keyhole. Is that what you mean? Partly. But I did say around the door, not just in it. Why not open it and have a look? I don't see any holes. Yes, I do. There's a hole in the doorway for the catch. Yes, but there's one left. The most important one. Come on, Cece. I give up. I could only see the mouse hole, the keyhole, and the hole for the catch. Ow! What about the most important one? The one you walk through? Of course. You know, Cece, I never thought of a doorway as a hole, but it is. It's a hole for coming in and going out of houses. It seems to me that holes are very important in our lives. Without the hole in the hose, I couldn't water the garden. And without the holes in the doorway, we'd all have to stay outside. They're worth a hunt, Hunter. They certainly are. But I can't go out right away. Why not? The bike's got a flat tyre. Oh. A hole in the valve. A hole in the pump. And when I screw them together, and start to pump, the air comes out through the hole in the end of the pump and in through the hole in the valve in the tyre. And the air fills it up. Yes. Hunting for holes will be hard, Albert. We can't bring them back to show CC, so I've got my trusty old film camera with me. For goodness sake, Albert, can't you think of anything else? bottom of a tree. Dry and sheltered. A good place for some small animal to live. Some animals aren't as lucky as you, Albert. Some animals have to take what they can get.
That's nest to sort of hole. that hole there. CC has a look, Albert. She'll be amazed. There we are, Albert. And now to show CC all the things we found on our hunt. What do you think of that? I've seen better hunts, Hunter. Now then, CC. I'll show you this in a moment. It's got my film on it. But first, let me show you this. See? One big hole in the middle. And look what happens. <laughs> and when there are lots of little holes, Oh, very good. But why bother having holes at all? Why not just have a solid, flat piece of wood? You mean, with all this filled in? Yes, why not? I suppose the racket would be too heavy. It would push against the air, and you could only swing it slowly. But with all the holes, the air can get through, and you can swing it easily. Holes? Big enough to let the air through, but too small to let the ball through. Like a fishing net. That's right. I like fish. I like mice too. Really, CC, a good friend of ours is a mouse. <gasps> yes, of course, I do beg your pardon. Um, what about the water pistol? Ah. To fill it up, there's a big hole at this end to let the water in. And there's a small hole at the other end, so that when you squeeze the trigger... <laughs> All right, CC, you, you mean cat. <laughs> Sorry, Hunter. How about we watch the rest of the hunt? First, we found a big tree hole. Albert and I could see right through it. And there's Albert in a small tree hole. Then I found a bird's nest. Mmm, very interesting, Hunter. Now, now, CC. After that, I got my foot caught in a hole in the ground. <laughs> Clumsy, aren't you? We saw drain pipe holes, and in the park there was a hole with a lot of water coming out of it. Far away, we heard a girl playing a recorder. When we got closer, 
we noticed that sometimes she covered the holes with her fingers and sometimes she didn't. I wonder why. That's something you can find out later on the computer. On the way home, we found a hole in the footpath. Two men were working on telephone lines. Mm, that must be an important hole. Yes, it is. And finally, we saw some house holes. How did you get up there? Never you mind, CC, never you mind. But I must say, Albert and I were much happier looking at house holes closer to the ground. Oh, it's finished. I was enjoying that. Don't worry. While you were out, I did a little hunting of my own and found three very interesting holes. First, an ant hole. Fascinating. It must be a very small hole. Mm, that's right. But there are much bigger holes in the ground, you know, like caves. Some people just love exploring caves. I don't think I would. It looks too dark and spooky. And cold and uncomfortable. Mm. Oh, what are those things? You mean to say you don't know? <coughs> really, Hunter? Sometimes I think you've got holes in the head. But I have. And what's more, so have you. Yes, I suppose I have. Do you know what I think, Cece? What? Without holes, life would be very difficult indeed. Now, weren't you going to find out how that recorder works? Yes. Then we can uh, sort out all the holes we've found into different groups. Like holes to let things through, holes to live in, holes in the head. Sit down, Hunter. I can't see. Wonderful. Do that again, bird. That's very odd, Albert. Unless my eyes are playing tricks. I'm hearing the sound of the axe after the axe has hit. Not at the same time. Very curious. This deserves a closer look. Uh, excuse me. Were you chopping any differently from what you were uh, a minute or two ago? 
You feeling all right, mate? I'm sure I wasn't imagining that, Albert. At first, I heard the sound of the axe after the axe hit. And then, when I went closer, I heard it at the same time. Strange. Anyway, I've got a good collection of bush sounds. Better get back to the den and get some new batteries. Well, I've got the batteries. Now, on with the hunt. Won't you stop for a cup of tea? At least have a chat for a minute or two. Sorry, Cece. I can't delay now. I want to find out more about sound. Enough, in fact, to make myself a musical instrument. I'll catch up with you later. Perhaps I could help, Hunter. Why don't we sit down and... Now, if we're going to find out enough about sound to work out how to make an instrument, we'll really have to be on the lookout, Albert. Or, maybe I should have said, listen out. Let's go to school. Another sound. Sorry, Albert, no offence. Let's go, Albert. That drill's a bit too loud for comfort. That's the loudest noise we've found so far. That's interesting. I can still hear the drill, but it doesn't sound so loud. I wonder why. Here we are, Albert. Just what I need. Oh, that's a nice sound. Much softer than that noisy drill. I'll just have a drink and then I'll record it. I don't know what you think, Albert, but that sounds different. I made the sound exactly the same way, but it is different. Funny. Oh well, I'll do it again. It's different again. I wonder why. Oh well. I 
think we're getting somewhere now, Albert. I think we'll go and look for a musical instrument. I know we haven't got enough money for an instrument, Albert. Am only going to ask some questions? I was wondering if you could tell me where I could find some people playing instruments. I'd like to watch. Right. You go up Liverpool Street, turn right, go four blocks, turn left, and you should hear the music from there. Right. Thanks very much. Bye. See you. Sounds as if they're upstairs, Albert. Let's go. collected lots of sounds, Hunter. Yes, and now I'm going to sort them out into all their different kinds. I'm sorry to tell you this, but there's one really important kind of sound you haven't recorded. Impossible, CC. I'm sure I've got every kind of sound there is. Well, we'll see. 
It's a kind of sound we use all the time. Right at this moment, in fact. Nonsense. There's no sound in this room. It's absolutely quiet. If you say so, Hunter. Have you worked out how sound is made? Uh, I think so. And why some sounds are high and some are low? Uh, well, I've got a few ideas about that. And why some are loud and some are soft? Well, uh, yes. And how sounds travel? Uh, I'm not sure, um, yet. What's all that mess over there? just some things you could make a musical instrument out of, if you're still interested. Oh, right. I could hit the boxes with this stick, like a sort of drum. Hmm, not exactly what I had in mind. I was thinking more of a string instrument. Oh, really? And how would you make that work? Well, you could... Uh... Hunter will be back next Saturday. And next on ABC This Morning, it's Flip Slide Turn. should do the trick. What did you say you were making? A reading lamp for a mouse. I thought so. Now you won't do anything silly with powerpoints or lights around the house, will you? Oh, oh no. Good. For if you do, you make it an electric shock. Very easy to do if you play with powerpoints or light switches or even with light bulbs in the main lights. Are you sure it's safe to play with, uh, I mean, uh, uh, work with uh, batteries and light bulbs like these? Oh, yes. Unless you fiddle with electricity on the main house supply. Well, if you do that... Exactly. We're back. Obviously. And now for some experimenting. Oh, I see you finished the book. Was it interesting? Positively electrifying. Really? Yes. There's not one negative thing I can say about it. Oh, oh good, good. Right, now this should be easy. It doesn't work. Why don't you run the other bit of wire from that other thing on the battery and put that on the bulb as well? No, it's no use. The battery must be flat. Do it anyway. All right. See? <laughs> Waste of time. Really? It works! I've invented light! We're rich! Don't get carried away, Hunter. You'll have to do a lot better than that. Unless you want to stand there all day with a wire in your hand. Inventing light is one thing, 
Inventing a switch to keep it on or off is another. Oh, you're right. But what I can't understand is, why didn't it work when I ran the first wire from the battery to the bulb? And why did it need two wires in a sort of circle? Well, it works, and that's the main thing. Mm, I suppose so. But there is one other problem. Oh? What's that? Well, I'd like to use two lights in Albert's house, not just one. Mm -hmm. And the question is, can I run two lights from the one battery? Hunter? Yes? Before you go any further, have a look over there. What is it? Press the switch and find out. something I came up with while you were out. But it's got a switch. You made a switch. Well, yes. But it's not the sort of switch you need. You need one that will stay on or off. Oh, and Hunter. Yes? You know that dream you had? Hmm. Well, does that remind you of anything? The mouse signal on the door. We can make one. Exactly. And if you work out how to run two lights from that battery for the mouse house, well, Albert should be very pleased. Let's do it. Now. Yeah. Seven o'clock in the morning. Time for your wake-up call. Oh, all right, I'll, I'll get up. Just, just turn it off. Mm. You, you sure it's time to get up? I'd really like a bit more time in bed. All right, you win this time. Today, if you remember, is a special day. Why? If you don't get up straight away, I won't tell you. All right. I'm getting up.
time to get dressed. C.C., mm -hmm. when you said today was a special day, what did you mean? Today is Albert's birthday. And we're going to celebrate. So you have to organise yourself in time to go off and buy a cake and candle. Well, what about that? Albert's birthday. Happy birthday, Albert. You must go soon, otherwise there won't be time. All in good time, C.C. Oh, the news. It's now eight o'clock, time for the news. It was announced today that work on the new Northern Freeway is unlikely to be completed in time for Christmas. Ex CC, mm. have you noticed that everything we've been speaking about today has had something to do with time? Mm. Firstly, you said it was time for my wake-up call, and then I said I'd need some more time in bed. And then when you forced me out, I said, you win this time? And then I said, Time to get dressed? And then you said I had to go out in time to get the cake and candle for Albert's birthday. And then the radio said it was time for the news, and the news said the road wouldn't be ready in time for Christmas. And we've talked about something else to do with time. What's that? Albert's birthday. When you have a birthday, it shows that a certain amount of time has passed. Yeah, so even though time is something you can't see, it's going on all the time. Oh, no, I said it again. I can't get away from time. So you see, I'm not going to say one other thing today that's got anything to do with time. All right. Hurry up and get the cake and candle for Albert. Right, the cake and candle for Albert. Hang on a second. I've got to do the washing up. That'll take 10 minutes. Then there's the holes in the socks. That'll take another 15 minutes to darn. We've got to oil the bike and pump up the tyres. That'll take another 10 minutes. That makes a total of, let's, let's see. That's 35 minutes or just over half an hour. Thanks, CC. That means that I can go out at, it's five past eight now, add 35 minutes. 20 minutes to nine or 8.40. Great, CC. Smart cat. Hunter, you've been talking about time. Oh, no, I haven't. You haven't mentioned the word time, but you've been talking about how long it'll take to wash up. Fix the bike, down the socks. If that's not talking about time, I don't know what is. Seems to me, Cece, that this time is a pretty tricky thing. And when I finish my work and go out and get the things for Albert's birthday, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and find out everything I can about time. About time you did. Pardon? Oh, never mind. It was meant to be a joke. Didn't you get it? No. But I probably will. In time. Mm. Now, where's this washing up? That'll take ten minutes. Then there's the socks.
Look, Albert, there's Felicity. I wonder what she wants. Let's go and find out. Hello, Felicity. Doing some running? Yes, I'm training for a race, but I need someone to time me. Timing's exactly what we're interested in, isn't it, Albert? It's Albert's birthday. Happy birthday, Albert. We're having a party later. How can we help you? I'd like you to time me running 50 metres. Here's my stopwatch. Hmm. This one's different to mine. Do I start it and stop it by pressing this button? Yes, that's right. When I get to the starting line, I want you to call out, on your marks, get set, go. On go, you start the watch, and as I cross the 50 metre line, you stop it. The watch should tell you exactly how much time it took me to run 50 metres. I'll go up to the starting line now. Sounds simple enough. Felicity's ready. I better get off the track. On your mark! Get set. Go! How much time did I take? You took nine seconds. I thought you were very fast indeed. It's not bad, but if I train a bit harder, I think I can make the distance in about a second less. So let's see. The faster you run, the less time it takes to cover 50 metres. Exactly. Thanks very much. You're a great help. Enjoy your birthday, Albert. Glad to be of assistance, Felicity. Good luck with your running. Bye. What a pleasant girl, Albert. Fast too. Covered that 50 metres in no time. Well, almost no time. Only nine seconds. All right, Albert. Time to get the cake. There, Albert. Everything a mouse could want on his birthday. Look at that, Albert. The post office clock. There's a good place to hunt for some information about time. Let's see what we can find out. You know, Albert, this reminds me of a song I used to sing a long time ago. I think I can still remember it. Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. Well, we're not running, but we're walking, and that's good enough. The clock struck one. Well, it can't very well strike one. It's only just struck ten, just a little while ago. The mouse ran down. Don't run down, Albert. We haven't gone up yet. Hickory dickory dock. This is the post office clock, Albert. It's quite different from a wristwatch, isn't it? It's got a pendulum down there that swings backwards and forwards. It's connected to these pulleys and cogwheels. Birthday mouse, home. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Albert. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! I suppose I should ask him to blow out the candle, but I don't think he'd have enough puff. <laughs>
This hunter is a picture of Albert just after he was born. <laughs> Albert, how you've changed. You were a funny little chap. Bald, eyes closed. <laughs> you were saying? Um, I think I'll give Albert a piece of cake. What was that you said? Bald, different? Uh, cheesecake, you'll notice, CC. The best thing for a mouse. I thought. We all change with time, Hunter. Even I was a kitten once. But I'm not going to show you a picture. Give Albert a piece of cake, please. There, a piece for Albert. And now, a piece. Look, Cece, how much this candle's burned down. I wonder if we timed how long it took the whole candle to burn and then worked out how much it burned in one minute, we could use it to measure the passing of time as a sort of clock. Yes, candle clocks have been used to measure the passing of time. And so have water clocks and sundials. Sundials sound interesting, CC. I'd be obliged if you could get me some information on how to make one. No sooner said than done. I see. This bit goes here. And the sun casts a shadow here. And the shadow moves around as the sun crosses the sky. And you tell the time by seeing where the shadow hits the marks. Easy. Right, Cece, I've got the sundial made up. All I need now is to get the sun to cast a shadow so I can work out the timing. You've forgotten one thing. What's that? You can't run it in here. The sun's outside. I knew that, you silly cat. I was just going out to put it up in the garden. Oh. Hat and scarf. By the way. Yes? While I'm gone, don't eat all the cake. Yeah. Had me worried there for a bit. Thought we were going to be in trouble. But one good thing came out of it. We found out that the brakes don't work. Oh, that means that we won't be riding home. We'll have to walk. I could never resist a slide, Albert, especially a long one like this. Look after the bike. Well, it might be rather interesting to see how long it takes to get to the bottom. Oh, 
Here we go. Ready, set, go! I don't know whether I enjoyed that or not. Hmm, five seconds. I wonder how long it would take a small child to slide the same distance. Hang on a minute. Ready, set, go! I thought for a while we'd never get away. Oh. Still, it was interesting taking all those times and comparing them. Hello! Look at that! I've always wanted to have a go on one of those. Hang on a minute. Stop! Good, make way for a hunter. Right, off you go. Look! Better hang on. Melbourne. I think we'll have a closer look. The sides are curved up like that. Strange they aren't flat like the other slide. Oh well, here goes. There's something about this slide that reminds me of the way I felt on the roundabout. But that's silly. The roundabout was going round. Well, I was on it, standing still. But on this slide, I was moving and the slide was still. So I couldn't have felt the same sort of thing. Any 
Anyhow, now I know why the sides are turned up. If they weren't, you'd go flying straight off. I don't like this, Hunter. I don't like it one little bit. It's most uncat-like. Who ever heard of a cat that plays with silly toys? Well, would you rather I bought you a ball of wool to hit around the floor like you did when you when were... When I was a computer kitten? Oh, dear. I haven't thought about that for years. Now that you mention it, Hunter, there's something nice about remembering the way we played as kittens. Well, yes, exactly. And all because of that playground, I got to remembering when I was a little kitten, uh, um, young hunter, <laughs> and, and how much fun I got from playing with toys. Terrific fun. And so I thought that using these toys, that maybe I could find out something more about that sideways force that I felt on the slide and the roundabout. It all seems rather silly to me. Nothing silly about toys. They're great. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Well, this one's yours. And you can have the outside track. And I'll have the inside track. Are you sure that's fair? Of course it's fair. Now, the idea is that you go as fast as possible and the one that covers the most number of laps wins. Most number of laps in how long? Well, that depends on who's in front. Um, I mean, uh, well, let's say five minutes for a start. Hmm. I suppose so. But five minutes is a long time to play with stupid cars. And I still don't think that track's fair. Of course it's fair. Now, ready, set, go! Wait! <laughs> Not fair to cats. Wasn't ready. Nonsense. It was a fair start. Oh, rats. You're right. It wasn't a fair start. Let's start again. Oh, no. No problem. Quite a fair start, I thought. Rats. Hunter, this track does not work when... Whenever I try to go fast round the corner, the car just goes flying off. Hang on. Something's coming to me. Hunter, I have to admit you're very clever. How did you know something was coming to you? Huh? Oh, oh, I see, I see what you mean. <laughs> oh, it's um, a gift we hunters have. Gifts? What's it say? Hang on, don't get your fur in a frazzle. Oh, and Hunter? Yes? I still don't think that track was fair. You on the inside, me on the outside. If we're going to keep playing, you'll have to do something to fix that. Well, you finickety feline, I'm not going to play with toys. We've got something else to think about now. Listen, Billy Cart Race. Design your own cart. Must steer safely and have good brakes. Must go as fast as possible downhill. In two weeks on Big Hill Road. That's where I nearly crashed. Come on, you motorised moggy. If we're to design the fastest Billy Cart that steers safely and has good brakes, 
We've got some testing to do. <laughs> right. Now the idea is, you say ready, set, go, and time me over this distance. And that way we can see which one of these machines is the fastest. And I can see how well they steer or stop. And then we can take the best features and design a super billy cart. Right. Ready, set, go! I've just remembered something. What? I haven't fixed the brakes yet. Ah! Ready, set, go! Ready, set, go! <laughs> thought it was good fun. I don't know why you didn't enjoy it. It would have been all right if you'd reminded me about the brakes. Ah, yes. But at least we've seen they're really important. All we have to do now is design some. Oh, I suppose you're right. But speaking of designing, I, I suppose we'd better get on with a billy cart. But I must say, I'm not quite as keen as I once was. Right. Well, apart from the brakes, what did we learn from the tests? Oh, for a start, we need four wheels. The bike wheels seem to be the fastest. Right. And we need steering that really works. What about the skateboard? What about the skateboard? Well, that didn't seem to have any steering at all. No. And I fell off, didn't I? Hmm. Uh, what about the pram? What about me?
There we are, Albert. A new tree's planted. I'll just give it some water. The shadow from those trees is getting very close. I hope it doesn't stop this little tree getting lots of sun to help it grow. It's later than I thought. Nearly time for your tea. What tummy always tells you the time. Care for a little nibble? Let's see. That shadow's now reached your cage. I wonder why. That's something worth investigating. So, while we were out in the garden, we noticed the shadows changing, CC. Why does that happen? Can you help us to find out? Of course, Master. Well, here's a tree. And here's a shadow. Where's the sun, Hunter? It must be over here. Hmm. That's right. It should be remembered, Hunter, that you can always tell where the sun is by looking at the shadows. That is, if you're smart, like me. Let's have another shadow, CC. There. Where's the sun now? About here. Try this one. Right over the tree. Meow. You know, Cece, there's something else about shadows. What? You can see how they're made. By a tree or something? Yes, but by the sun also. The tree blocks the sun's light and that causes the shadow. But if there are clouds... Then the tree's shadow would be swallowed up by the cloud's shadow. But when the cloud's not there... There's the tree's shadow back again. Now, let's see. Where were we? The sun was over here. Then here. Then overhead. And as the day goes on, the sun starts to go down. And the shadow grows long again. And appears on the other side of the tree. That's because the sun has moved across the sky. Of course, Cece. Every day the shadows change as the sun moves. Hang on, I've got an idea. This is what our world looks like, Cece. And that can be the sun. Look, there. 
there's Australia. The light's just catching it. Just like in the morning. Now the Earth is slowly turning around. Till the light, uh, I mean the sun, is shining right at us. That's in the middle of the day. But the Earth keeps turning and turning and Australia gets further and further away from the sun. Then it's night in Australia. And do you see what night is, Cece? What? It's the shadow of the Earth. Half the world is always in shadow. Yes. When the sun's shining here in Australia, all the places on the other side of the world are in shadow. They're in the dark. And when they're in daylight, we're in the night, and everyone can go to sleep. Not everyone. We cats stay awake at night sometimes. We can see just as well in the dark as we can in the daylight. Hmm. Lots of other animals can too. As well as us, Albert. Many creatures sleep in the daytime and go out to look for food at night. And some get eaten. Spiders spin their webs in the dark. They're food traps too. Very interesting, CC. But we're hunting shadows. Like that one? What? Oh yes, what a beauty. Amazing! I've got another idea, Cece. Oh? See, I can change the size of the shadow. Oh, look at that. What? When the shadow is big, its edges are fuzzy. But when it's small, the edges are sharp and clear. See how the shape can be changed? Mm, no. Oh, this is so exciting, Cece. I've got yet another idea. Turn your head and see if you can guess what this is. Hunter, we're not playing games. We're experimenting with shadows. That's just what I am doing, experimenting. See if you can guess what this is. That's not fair, Hunter. I can't see what you're holding. That's the point, you dopey cat. Ow. What is it? Looks like a ball. No, wait a minute. It's a round bat with a small handle. No, that's not it. Watch. Hmm. It's a cylinder or a box. No, it's my coffee mug. Look. So, you can't always tell the shape of an object by its shadow. Mm. And you can't always tell what the real size of an object is from its shadow. Yes, even Albert's shadow could be as big as an elephant. How about elephant-sized mice? Meow! I wouldn't want to meet a mouse that big. Oh, don't worry, you won't ever have to. Shadows are surprising, aren't they? They can change their shape and they can get bigger and smaller. I think I'll go out hunting and see if there's anything else they can do. But I haven't had my tea. Albert's had a piece of cheese. So you fix something for yourself. Hmm. And I'll take Albert on a shadow hunt.
What do you think's going on here? Hi, Jenny. Oh, hello, Hunter. I'm glad you've come in. We're doing some experiments with coloured shapes. This is a shadow puppet screen, and we've got a light up here, which throws the light down onto the screen, and you can see these shapes from the other side. Let me show you what happens. You just take away the piece of cardboard, and you can see it. It's CC. That's right. And this one, I have to be very careful that my shadow doesn't fall across one of the other pictures. So I have to take it off like that. And the last one is this one here, which you may recognise. Look, Albert. This is a simple shadow puppet. And how do you make it? I'll show you. What we do first is we uh, draw a design and then cut it out and decide where we want it to move. Where we want it to move, we cut it so that this is cut into three pieces like that. And I've taken these pieces and drawn round them on a bit of cardboard and added a section here so that we've got a space where we can join it back together again. This is the piece which has been cut out with the bit added onto it. And then what we do next is just to put the three pieces of the puppet which we've cut out back, overlapping them so that we can make a hole through the join with a sharp pair of scissors. And all that's necessary then is to join them together by putting a paper fastener through. And when we've put the paper fastener through, you get the movement from the joint. When it's finished, it looks like this, with the wires attached on the joint at each end, so that we can get movement from it. Can I try that on the screen? Yes, let's do that now. A light, a shape, and a screen. That's all you need. That's right. With a light, and a shape, and a screen, you can tell any story that you like. I didn't think shadows could be so exciting, CC. Look at this. Hmm. Could be the moon, except it's dark instead of light. Now, I'll just make a cut along here. Hmm. And make a hole here. Now it looks like the man in the moon. That's right. <sighs> Haven't you found out enough about shadows yet, Hunter? Oh, there's one other thing I found out from Jenny. Look. Oh? What happens to this piece of waxed paper? Hmm. It doesn't make a very dark shadow. And this book? Oh, the book's shadow is darker. So some objects will let a lot of light through and some won't. I can see that, Hunter. What about this? A red shadow. The red cellophane makes a red shadow and the red book makes a dark shadow. That's because the book is too thick to let any light through. Well, there are lots more experiments we can do with shadows. Mm, not now, Hunter. It's late. If you don't go to bed soon, the sun will be coming up. Oh, all right. Albert's gone to bed. So... 
I guess I'd better go too. It's been a long day. I'll switch off the computer. Are you going out, Cece? No. I didn't have my cat nap today, so I'll stay in tonight and sleep. Hmm. I must wash my face. Hmm. I'll turn out the light and go to bed. <laughs> What's that? Just a possum on the roof. I knew that all the time. I wonder why noises at night sound more scary than noises in the daytime. I must investigate that sometime. But it should be remembered, Hunter, that night's just a big shadow. That way the noises won't be so scary. Maybe you're right, Cece. Maybe you're right. Good night. Oh.